Hey guys, what's up? Excoundrel here, and today I'm going a little bit back to my roots, and we're going to be using math to look at some key concepts in Vainglory. Uh, and today we're going to cover a topic that I haven't covered properly. Now, you may have seen me cover it slightly in some of my videos, looking at some of the items way back, looking at damage, but today we're going to talk about defense and how defense works. Now, this is quite a math heavy video, I'm going to warn you up front. There's a lot of calculations and explanations in here. Um, Hopefully, at the end of it, you'll come away learning a little bit more about Vainglory defensive items, but maybe even a little bit more about maths as well, because I use um, things like gradient of a slope. We also talk about some formulas. It's, it is fairly simple stuff if you have studied math in any form um, above 16, but uh, above 16 years of age. But obviously, if you haven't, then try and keep along with it, because I'll explain it in the most simple terms possible. In this video, we are going to talk about the, de the defensive formulas that Vainglory uses to calculate damage. Now, we're not talking about Pierce because that got changed a couple of updates ago. We're looking at the defensive formulas that Vainglory uses to calculate raw damage based on the defenses that you have. And then we'll be talking about when it's worth to actually buy defenses and how much gold you have to invest to get certain percentage reductions. That is all going to sound a little bit complex up front, so let's do break it down at the base level. Ringo as a carry has between 20 and 50 armor and shielding he gets about 2.7 a level and that's between levels 1 and 12 lance on the other hand scales all the way up to 70 these are just some basic um, heroes and their scalings so you'll never actually fully receive the total weapon power or the total crystal power damage because you start with some innate reduction you start with 20 armor or 20 shield and that's always going to give you a very low level of reduction um, of of the actual damage that your items say they do. The formula for this, the formula, the way we calculate this, is this here, and I'm going to explain it like this. X, the blue X, is the damage that you actually deal. W is your weapon power, and A is the armor that you're going up against. So the formula of damage dealt is your weapon power divided by 1 plus the armor over 100, which is the armor divided by 100. If you put all the numbers into that formula you'll get an output which gives you the damage dealt this can also apply to crystal power in exactly the same way where x is the damage dealt w is the damage from an ability not your cp the damage from an ability the damage that an ability deals is your crystal power multiplied by the cp ratio of that ability and a is your shielding the defense formulas for armor and shielding are exactly the same and using this formula you can calculate how much damage a build will do, how much damage an ability will do based on how much armor or shielding your opponent has. So that's all very well and good, Excoundrel, but what does 20 armor and shielding actually get you? At the very level one, what is the reduction that I get to CP and weapon power damage coming in at my hero? So let's take 100 weapon power as a really good round figure. That's because it's going to allow us to calculate a percentage reduction a lot more readily. We're going to take 20 armor and shielding and plug it into this formula. 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.2 plus 1 is 1 1.2. 100 divided by 1 1.2 is 83.3 which is the damage that you deal. So you go, if you have 100 weapon power and you hit someone at level 1 you're going to deal 83.3 damage per basic attack. That is a reduction of 17.7%. So at level 1 you get 17.7% reduction. At level 12, when you have 50, uh, 50 armor and shielding of Ringo and you don't have any defensive items, you get a reduction of 33.3% recurring, of course. Uh, and obviously, then we look at Lance as he scales up towards his 70 armor and shielding that he gets naturally. He gets a reduction of 42.2%. So it's pretty good natural reduction that you get there for very little armor investment um but obviously those are big leaps for what is seemingly very small gains in armor and shielding and you haven't bought any items yet the best way to display this is in a graph uh, i put the figures into excel put a simple line graph out and you'll see here this is a curve that is never going to reach 100 it starts down at 20 because obviously you can't actually get zero armor and shielding in the game and scales up to 300 which would be a pretty insane value of armor and shielding to actually get i believe that's something like two metal jackets and your or your natural armor and shielding the way to show the difference in scaling of armor and shielding damage reduction is something called the slope. You can find out the slope of a curve, and that will give you um, 
essentially the increases and decreases on the y-axis based on every x unit that you have. Our x units are armor and shielding and our y-axis is reduction in damage. The slope on the 20 to 100 shielding section or, or armor section is 0 0.4 which means every one armor and shield that I gain, I gain an extra 0 0.4 reduction in damage. The slope between 220 and 300 at the very high armor values, every one armor and shield that I gain, I gain a 0 0.08 reduction in damage. It's a pretty nutty difference and you'll see that the armor and shielding effectiveness drops off the further that you go up the scale. Which then begs the question, if I invest into some defensive items... What kind of reduction is that going to get me? Well, let's take Ringo, because he is someone that you might consider buying defensive items on. You would buy defensive items probably naturally on someone like Lance, so we're going to consider Ringo. And let's consider Ringo at level 12. He's already got 50 armor from his kit. Um, now we're going to add the armor of these particular items on. The 30 from light armor, I believe it's 65 from coat of plates, it's 80 from atlas pauldrons, and I believe it's 120 from metal jacket. So that puts us at different points on this curve, all somewhere in the middle, um, not from that ludicrous gain, but somewhere in the middle where it starts to scale off towards the top end. And you'll see here, from this particular instance, light armor gives you a 44.4% reduction, coat of plates gives you a 53.5, atlas pauldrons a 56.5, and metal jacket jumps you up to 63. For those of you that are wondering what it means for shielding, the shielding values on um, those shielding items that correspond are exactly the same. It's, it's a five difference between Atlas Pauldrons and, and Aegis. Aegis gives you 135 total shielding, but the actual difference in damage reduction will be negligible. So, so Kinetic Plate, Light Shield, and Aegis um, will give exactly the same reductions almost as Light Armor, Coat of Plates, and Atlas Pauldrons. So you'll be able to apply that to the rest of the video uh, depending on what you see. So now that we've seen where they sit on the graph, what exactly is that going to mean in terms of gold spent to effective damage reduction gained? Because this is a really important thing that you have to ask yourself. How much gold do you want to spend to gain damage reduction? Uh, and this is obviously going to apply to shielding as well because the costs are roughly the same. So at 50, at level 12, with no gold spent, you're going to get a natural 33% reduction in all damage coming in from all sources, both CP and our um, weapon power. If you invest just 250 gold into a light armor or a light shield, that is going to jump by 11.4%. You're going to get 11.4% extra damage reduction for just 250 gold. Uh, and that's the light armor investment. But let's say you want to go a little bit further. For an extra 550 on top of your light armor or light shielding purchase, you are going to get another roughly 10%. It's about 9% really. So an extra 550 is going to grab you another 9%. So for 800 gold in total, you're going to grab an extra 20% damage reduction. That is a pretty nutty statistic in terms of uh, gold spent to actual um, damage reduction gained. If you then go to Atlas Pauldrons, for an extra 1,100 on top of your coat of plates, you're only going to gain 3% damage reduction. And it's a very similar statistic for Aegis with Kinetic Shielding as well. So upgrading Kinetic Shielding to Aegis is going to give you um, only an extra 3% damage reduction, but it will obviously give you the reflex block. Upgrading from coat of plates to Atlas is going to give you a 3% damage reduction increase for 1,100 gold. But you get the Atlas... Um, activatable which is obviously very good against high attack speed heroes and it did just get buffed so obviously atlas then ties into being a purely situational item to lower the attack speed it's not the go-to defensive item to reduce damage because you might as well just stick on a coat of plates for an extra 1200 gold you're going to net yourself about another 9.5 percent damage reduction so it all sits on a fairly linear curve um, but obviously you have to spend a lot more to get that damage reduction in the later game with the uh, the metal jacket. So if I were to give you some advice just based on these statistics, if you want to get 
damage reduction in the early game, spend that 250 gold on a light armor or light shielding. You get an extra 10%, uh, 11% or 11.5% damage reduction on top of what you're already getting from your natural. And that's only going to increase in the early levels as well. If you look at that graph, if we go back to that graph, you'll notice that in the very early levels that spikes really hard at the start. So the earlier that you buy that light armor or light shielding, the more effective it's going to be. Then you get towards the mid and late game, if you just spend an extra 550, you get another 10% on top of that. So it's a really, really good investment to add another 10% on top of that. If you're struggling to survive, that is when you're going to want to invest in something like a metal jacket. I hope this has been useful. Um, I really enjoyed doing this video and hopefully I'll be releasing a uh, Best Heroes on 3.3 this week. So thank you very much, guys. I will see you soon.